An abdominal aortic aneurysm is a potentially serious condition that is the 13th leading cause of death in the United States and the 10th leading cause for men over 55. It claims the lives of about 15,000 Americans each year. Dr. Todd Neuberger is a vascular surgeon with SSM Vascular Institute who treats abdominal aortic aneurysms. The aorta is the largest artery in the body. Virtually all of our arteries in some manner originate from the aorta and it's one of the more common arteries to develop an aneurysm, which means that the artery dilates or balloons up and abdominal aortic aneurysm means that it's occurring in that section of the aorta that is moving through or across the abdomen. The aorta itself would typically be about the size of a garden hose, so we're talking about an artery already that's pretty large. When it's considered an aneurysm, it's when it's twice that size. Aneurysms themselves are a concern because of the potential for rupturing. So if the aneurysm continues to increase in size, just like a balloon continuing to increase in size, at some point it ruptures, and it's 75 to 90 percent fatal if it would rupture. The average aneurysm patient is between 60 and 75 years old and is much more likely to be male. Smoking is the primary risk factor, but other risk factors include high blood pressure and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD. Family history is also a factor. Aneurysms themselves are typically asymptomatic, and most patients will have one and have no idea that it's present, and often they're picked up accidentally based on some other imaging. Occasionally they're identified by a primary care physician doing a physical exam when feeling in the abdomen they feel a pulsation. When we know a patient has an aneurysm and it's of a size that it should be fixed, the options are whether it will be an open aneurysm repair or if it will be done with a technique called endovascular repair. Until about the year 2000, all aneurysms had been repaired by open technique which is an abdominal operation where we would open the abdominal cavity the aorta is behind all of the abdominal contents, the bowels. We move those out of the way essentially and replace that segment of the aorta where the aneurysm had developed. And that was done with a piece of Dacron tubing that would be sutured in in replacing the aorta. It's a very good operation and occasionally we still utilize it. But it is much more invasive and, and much more of a recovery for a patient. It's typically five to ten days in the hospital, one to two of those days are spent in the ICU, and six to eight weeks of recovery. In most patients today, we can treat their aneurysm by a technique that's called endovascular. In an endovascular repair, we're able to make very small incisions at the groins and actually introduce a graft or a covered stent into the inside of the aorta. A simple way to think about it gets back to the analogy of the garden hose. And if you thought of a garden hose, that had developed a large blister or an area of swelling and you could take a second garden hose and slip it inside, when you had accomplished that and you turned on the water, it would now run through the inner hose and the blister would be insignificant. We are able to treat aneurysms in a very similar fashion. We have a stent that we can put from the inside, it has a fabric lining, and once it's in position, the blood now runs through that stent and no longer applies pressure to the aneurysm and eliminates the risk of its rupture. The patient afterwards goes to the recovery room for one to two hours, spends one night in the hospital in a regular room, and goes home the following day. Their overall length of recovery is about two weeks while they're recovering from the incisions in their groins. As far as the long-term results, uh, both are very, very good. If you have an open aneurysm repair, we do not have to follow that on a long-term basis. Once you have been released for full activity, we don't follow that in any kind of way or any type of imaging. With an endograft, it is important that that be observed with different kinds of imaging for the life of the patient. The SSM Vascular Institute has been at the forefront of many clinical and technological advances to enhance patient care and improve outcomes. We at SSM Vascular Institute are part of what is called the Vascular Quality Initiative. This is a voluntary study in which we supply all of our outcomes, all the data related to our patients to determine and demonstrate that we do have outcomes that meet national expectations and national benchmarks. Patients with aneurysms may not have symptoms, but once they become aware of an aneurysm, it does become a stress in their life. And they come back appreciative to know that it's no longer an issue or problem for them. 
Treatment of the aneurysm is only the first step in restoring good health. It does not cure the underlying condition that caused the problem to develop. Further medical evaluation, treatment, and changes in lifestyle to reduce risk factors for heart and blood vessel disease are essential. These changes may include exercising, adopting a healthy diet, controlling blood pressure and weight, lowering cholesterol levels, and not smoking. What is rewarding as a vascular surgeon is seeing how people's quality of life is significantly improved by the changes that are created with these procedures. SSM Vascular Institute physicians are recognized for their expertise in the treatment of aortic aneurysms, peripheral artery disease, carotid artery disease, varicose veins, vascular access for dialysis patients, and other conditions relating to the vascular system. For more information or a referral to an SSM vascular specialist, call 1-866-SSM-DOCS.